This one is for Alexander Kosha, and he says, ranking in Marvel Snap feels harder than ever, and this is why. And yes, it feels harder than ever, but let's see why he says it happens, brother. Because I have multiple theories, but not, uh, I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe he does know, so let's check it out. I see that ranking up in Marvel Snap, a competitive card game, is a significant motivating factor for a lot of players. And so when ranking up becomes extremely difficult or unpredictable, people get a little frustrated and rightfully so. So in this video, I wanna talk about five different factors that are kind of related to the difficulty a lot of players are. Oh, he is going to say five different things too because putting your finger onto just the one thing that is fucking everything up, it isn't easy to do. So uh, having different factors, <laughs> I believe is the right approach for them experiencing ranking up right now and uh, this is most notable for me because in past you know I haven't taken ranking very seriously but this season I told myself you know what I'm gonna take a little more seriously I want a high win rate I want to rank up higher and uh, so I've been experiencing a lot of the frustrations that you guys have been as well and I actually want to talk about one of them in particular is absolutely infuriating but the other ones kind of start to make a little more sense once you really think about it so let's start the discussion with number one and that is the first thing to understand is that less new players are coming every day now obviously as players we don't have the same metrics that second dinner might have but uh, i can tell you from a, like a youtuber perspective that we're seeing less new players coming in every single day and that might change with the battle mode release and with obviously the 1.0 pc I, this makes me remember something again i play a lot of dora brother and ranking up in dora has also get harder and harder every year that passes up and I believe this is happening in Marvel Snap 2. And I will tell you what this makes me remember. I don't know if this is where he is going, but what he just said makes me remember this. And is that the players are learning the game. Now that the game has uh, some months that is what release, people have more experience with the game. People go into YouTube and look for a good deck. People go looking for tips, how to reach to infinite, how to correctly snap, how to retreat, all that bullshit. And people learn to play the game. So the competition gets tougher. The bar raises and is higher and higher and higher for every rank, every season that passes. And I believe this will continue to happen as, as the whole community grows and, and learn to play the game. And I believe this uh, resembles the, the, the bullshit with new players because uh, there are not as much unexperienced people on the ladder, you know? That is how I relate these two topics. Yo, Raptor, my dude, how you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? Yo, Herc, my dude, how you doing, brother? I hope you both are great, brothers release there's always going to be new influxes of players but I the reason why this is relevant you. is because with uh, less new players coming in that means you're facing off against more experienced players on a regular basis this is key because more experienced players not only are going to start you know building their collection track they're going to have more go. access to cards but they'll learn how to pilot those cards better newer players or players that are very casual and just experimenting might be a little easier for you to feast your cubes off of we're getting less of those players right now because the game is kind of in a, I don't want to say a maintenance state, but we're, we're kind of in between major releases. So you're going to get less hype and less influxes of new players. And so your ability to kind of feast on those new players is limited. The matches you're getting are likely against more experienced players, regardless of their rank. And if you can take a look at like social media, whether it be Twitter, Reddit, or whatever, you'll see that a lot of players, even experienced players that are kind of struggling in the mid fifties and sixties are still like, you know, they're experienced players, and so if you're in those ranks, you're facing off against other players who have experienced profiles in the game, but may not be having the same levels of success. So definitely keep that in mind that when there's less new players coming into a game, you might be facing stiffer competition because you're facing experienced players. With that being said, the reason number two is that players are honestly just getting better. Um, what I said, so yes, the, the, he got to that too. He got to that too. What I said, because this is something obvious, right? Uh, yo, Raptor, I deleted the vote. I, I purposely deleted the vote, bro. Sorry for that. Uh, but uh, the, the part of the video where I reacted it is on YouTube if you want to catch it, bro. Uh, and getting Atuma, getting Atuma in a crate is fucking stupid. I know how it feels because I got Atuma in a, in a crate too, bro. <laughs> With more experience comes 
better skills and as you build a skill profile in this game by playing more by playing for you know since the release or since beta or whatever it happens to be you're getting better at the game and so is everyone else around you this is important to understand because there's also a lot of content out there on youtube twitter and elsewhere which was going to help players get better at the game the deck lists are being more refined the uh you know oh talking about that cosmic beard i have the the shuri pinned and i have the tokens but I don't know if I should uh, get it yet. You know, I have three reserves that we are going to open after this video. And maybe I get Shuri in there and I don't have to pay the tokens. Let's hope for that. And the other thing is that I don't know if they are going to nerf Shuri in the next balance patch. Because supposedly when the season starts next week, they probably will make some balance, ch balance changes. So I am on the fence. But I pinned Shuri, of course, I pinned her. The, the actual play styles and the strategies towards snapping and retreating are getting more exposure. Players yes. are getting better. And as players get better, that skill ceiling to rise through each rank increases as well. As time goes on and less new players are entering the game, you're going to have more players of greater experience levels getting access to more resources like deck trackers and other things. That I would argue that this is cool, you know. I would argue that, that it is good that the game is competitive, you know. I don't want to get to infinite just cruising around and destroying everyone you want to feel like you accomplished something you know like you got to infinite because you uh, rose above the competition the competition you know what you are doing you are better than the other dude it is not because you face a bunch of weak opponents and you just destroy them brother that is not the feeling you are looking for you are looking for the real competition so yeah i am fine with it being hard and if someday it is so hard that i can't do it i am fine with that i am fine with that brother if i am not good enough i am not good enough i am not going to look for excuses i am not going to say any bullshit i you i will just assume that i am just not good enough to get it you know and i believe that is how every competitive system All should work go. That are going to help them to be successful in the game so the competition is only going to get tougher and then on that note as well the reason number three especially if you're in those middling ranks between like 50 and 70 you're going to be facing almost no bots the reason why bots were included in the game is because second dinner wanted there to be very snappy no pun intended matchmaking they didn't want you to wait like a minute and a half for a match they wanted you to get in a match rather quickly that was a key uh, kind of design component and i would also argue that this is good i don't play the game because i want to play against bots brother if i want if i wanted to play against bots i would say to them hey create a game mode where you just play against ai like other games have you know I don't want to play against bots, that is bullshit, I want to play against people. So this is another good thing, you know. Yes, that makes it harder to rank up, but well, that is how the world works, brother. It has to be hard to rank up, you know, that is the, that is the purpose of this bullshit. And, and playing against bots is stupid, I don't want to play against bots. Of their overall goal. So bots were included in order to kind of, you know, smooth out the wait times in the events at the appropriate yes brother i put on the, the the morph avatar because i said you know what i am going to embrace this i am going to embrace this the if i have the morph bullshit with all the variants from morph and the morph avatar and all of that i said you know what i am going to embrace it and i am going to put on the morph avatar and there you go of course it is ironic but who cares brother match couldn't be found with players and during the beta bots were very prevalent but now that we have a worldwide release a lot of players are playing especially in those middling ranks you're not facing bots all that often bots were often kind of easy cubes although sometimes they're a little clairvoyant and they cheated a bit they are much easier on, on aggregate than a human player human players Correct. are much more skittish they retreat much more often they're much more intelligent naturally and they obviously do you know specific combos in appropriate ways sometimes you'd have bots with a deck that like they were playing incorrectly like they were literally piloting the deck incorrectly because they're bots human players won't do that so if you're in those middling ranks you're kind of like on the bell curve so to speak 
of Marvel Snap and you're going to be facing a lot of human players and that is why the ranking can feel so difficult. Less bots, more humans, more competition all around. And these first three points kind of really mend themselves together to really help you understand like wow like that actually makes perfect sense like that is what i'm experiencing a lot of human players and a lot of competition and that's why those middling ranks can feel like such an insane grind the fourth reason and i, I feel almost bad saying this because I, I don't think it's completely fair to second dinner but it is worth mentioning i want to be devil's advocate here but ranking is harder i think right now for those that are free to play because with the additions of silver surfer and zabu those have been bro thank you for saying this thank you for saying this and i know a lot of people don't want to hear this but this is true if you don't have silver surfer Zabu, the ball cheat is harder it is fucking harder you can do it of course you can do it you can a hundred percent do it if you are a free to play player there are a lot of people that do it but it is harder and you have to grind more and you will face a lot of these decks, the Silver Surfer Bolchin, the Sabu Bolchin, the Shuri Bolchin, and, and th those are expensive, sorry, expensive cards for her. Those are expensive cards for sure. So it is harder if you are not playing a meta deck. And right now the meta decks are the, the decks that you have to have an expensive card. So these decks are uh, in quotes, blocked behind a paywall, you know? So, yes, the game is paid to win. We know the game is paid to win. Two month-to-month -month Battle Pass cards that have been absolutely meta-defining. Every single meta list that I've made, I have to include Zabu and Silver Surfer. I'm literally doing a disservice to the community if I don't. They are critical to the current meta. And if you're not someone who purchased the Battle Pass and you don't have access to those two cards, then you're, I think you're at a disadvantage. And I don't want to go as far as to say that like it's a possible pay-to-win argument, um <laughs> ah, bro, the brother doesn't wanna say it brother don't worry alex don't worry i will say it for you the game is a hundred percent pay to win my dude yes some people say it is not pay to win because you can get to infinite being free to play yes but again it is harder you have to be a better player it is harder you have to grind for more games and it is a really a stick bullshit and it is just easier to just get your pay to win cards my brother if you have the sabu dark hawk shuri deck it is easier everybody knows this everybody fucking knows this there are people that climb to infinite the first day of the season with the sabu dark hawk shuri bullshit just one day from 70 to 100 just like that brother the game is a hundred percent pay to win and if you won't say it my dude because well you have your reserves i will say it for you don't worry about it the game is a hundred percent pay to win brother But like, I because Sabu, for all this season, that was arguably the strongest card in the game for this season that we just had. You can't, you couldn't get Sabu if you didn't pay ten bucks. So how do you call that, brother? There was no free-to-play way to get Sabu. And if Sabu was the strongest card arguably in the season, then how do you call that, my dude? How do you call that bullshit? I will tell you how you call it. You call it pay to win, brother. That is how you call it. I think the conversation could be had. So if you're a free to play player, for instance, and you are facing lots of Silver Surfer and Zabu, and you don't have those cards yourself, hell yeah, the ranking can be extremely frustrating. They're two very good cards. And so not having access to those cards can be a little bit of a detrimental effect on your willingness to play the game and engage in the ranking system. So. I don't want to say that like it's harder for free to players right now but it kind of feels like it might be harder for free to play players right now and i think it's worth mentioning that specifically how 100 percent it is surfer and zabu are in the current meta finally the fifth point i want to bring up because i don't want the video to be too long here the fifth point is kind of really important and um this is what actually encouraged me and really motivated me to make this uh this video because matchmaking is currently extremely opaque while we still have an understanding of you know we're taking collection level into consideration win rate and hidden mmr into consideration we're taking uh rank into consideration we really don't know the exact metrics that second dinner is used for matchmaking now the reason why i bring this up is because i had been suspecting for a while as soon as i hit about rank 70 72 range i started reaching and playing against infinite players Exactly. And I was like, yes. you know what? That's not really fair. Why would a rank 70 be against a rank 100? That is a 30 rank difference. That is a very significant difference, right? 
And at first I thought I was just being like a little, I was in my head. I thought I was being a little paranoid, right? And because like I didn't- They have confirmed it. They, they personally have confirmed that this happened and we know that this happened, of course. Know the players I was facing. They had like the Herald of Galactus. The title, or exactly. The, the really, title. really dirty title. And I'm like, these are infinite players. They had the card backs and stuff, right? And I was like, like well, obviously those are prior seasons, but even this season, if they, if they have really, really dirty in their name, they're infinite, right? So I was thinking, like, maybe it's just a bot, or maybe, I don't know, right? I don't want to make any just snap judgments. I would emote, they wouldn't emote back anyway. And then something happened. I started facing people I knew. And I started facing other content creators, like, for instance, Coco4. I faced Coco4, and I know Coco4 very well. Absolutely shout out to Coco4. I'm going to have a link to his uh, stuff down below. I think he's an absolutely fantastic streamer, super talented player. And um, Coco4, I know for a fact, is infinite. So we played against each other. Brother, you you have the Octavarium nickname, brother. And you know from where I know Octavarium. Octavarium to me is a Dream Theater album. I don't know if there is something else called like that, but to me, Octavarium is a Dream Theater album. So if you have it because of Dream Theater, shout out to you, my brother. That is fucking cool. <laughs> there? And I messaged him after. I said, what rank are you? And he's like, I'm infinite. And I'm like, well, I'm 72 right now. It's like... 28 ranks different at the very very least right and he's like yeah that's not quite right right like that's not a fair matchup and maybe i thought it was like a you know one-off thing and then shortly thereafter i went against uh kraken null and this was even crazier for me because with kraken null not only is kraken null an infinite player and i confirmed this because we were uh, messaging each other but kraken null is also like well over like it's like i think 16k collection score like insane collection score right so I'm level 74 at this rank. I'm rank 74 at this point, and he's rank 102. Again, I'm thinking this is insane. Like, why would a rank 70 something be facing off against an infinite player? That's an insane rank differential. And I think that players in like the 70s, 80s, and 90s are finding it so hard to rank up because they're facing infinite players. There are infinite players that get there and then start playing right meme decks, and that's cool. I appreciate that. But there are a lot that are still hard sweating it out there because it's a competitive card game. Dudes want to win, right? And I got no problem with that. And they don't know who they're facing. They don't know they're facing because we don't know each other's ranks. So they don't know that they're facing someone that's 30 ranks under them. And I think the thing that really frustrates me from that perspective is like when I'm playing an infinite player, um, most other games, like I used to play like Warcraft 3 competitively. Whenever the elos were really, really wide, right? Like if I was ever facing a player that was really higher ranked than I was, if I won that game, I got bonus rank because like the expectation exactly. was, you know what? I also played Warcraft 3 uh, where you build your stuff and I liked it a lot after, uh, before going into Dota, you know? That is how you get into Dota. You played Warcraft 3, you know? <laughs> and yes, in the system of Warcraft 3, if you beat that dude that is higher than you, you get a bonus that you wouldn't get normally. If I'm facing an infinite player, that infinite player should beat me, right? If I'm level 70, if I'm rank 70 and they're rank 100, they should beat me. And if I... You know how a lot of people solve this, uh, like the ELO system in chess. The ELO system in chess uh, solves this problem, by the way. I beat them, maybe I should get a little bonus for that, right? And I mean, World uh, Warcraft used to do it so like they would actually get penalized even more, which wasn't always a great system either because they were expected to win, you were expected to lose. If the results were flipped, you know, the matchmaker would have to account for that. Um, a very interesting thing to think about, because as it is right now, if I'm playing against infinite players when I'm 70 or 80, I'm in the mid-80s right now as recording. If I'm in the mid-80s playing against infinite players, that's way harder for me than facing off against guys who are in the 80s or 70s. Those, like, that's a huge gap, right? And then it goes to say, okay, well then, what are the times am I facing? If I'm in the 80s, are there times where they don't find a match? and Am I facing someone in the 50s that I don't even realize? Right? And that's not fair to them either. So I think the matchmaking system is a little opaque right now. And I can confirm, literally, that if you're in the 70s and 80s, you will be facing infinite players. And yes, I don't think that's fair. Um, so that can be a major, major factor as to why people are having so much difficulty climbing. Because I think that it would be much more frustrating if you saw, like, oh, I just matched against an infinite player. Like, why am I matching against someone that's so high? And then right now you have the situation where, like, you don't even know you're matching against an infinite player. And chances are, they're going to kick your butt, right? Like, and you don't really know why. You just think like, man, this guy had all the cards. This guy was so good. Like, what happened? Like, why am I losing these games? It's becoming so hard. So if you knew they were infinite, maybe you'd go into that game being like, you know what? I'm probably going to lose. And you accept the defeat a little easier 
but then you're frustrated because of the matchmaking system. So I don't have an answer, but I'm telling you right now, this is what's happening. So I want to make this video simply for that reason, to really kind of shed some light on ranking right now, because I think that a lot of people are super frustrated with it. I've been frustrated with it, and I know that it's a common sentiment in the community. But guys, your feedback's important, so let me know your comments and your ideas in the comment section down below. You know, I know Second Dinner's always listening. This was a cool video, brother. This was a cool video because, yes, we uh, it is cool talking about the why the ranking is hard, and I agree on mostly every point that you made in here. Uh, but am I frustrated by the matchmaking? A little bit, but not a lot. Uh, I believe that my games to get to infinite were hard, but they were hard as they should be, you know. The part that got me frustrated is that it's too long of a grind, you know. You have to play a lot of games, and not everybody is going to be willing to do that. But the difficulty of the games, in my opinion, was cool, you know. I want it to be a challenge. What I don't want is to spend a long time doing that bullshit. That is a problem. Uh, but yes, I, I believe the, 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 the system can be improved. Of course it can be improved because right now, as you said, we don't know what goes into the matchmaking, you know. Uh, the collection level, in my opinion, shouldn't be a part of the equation. And then you have all this bullshit where you are 60 and 70 and you face against an infinite player, which is unfair. It is unfair. We know this, brother. Uh, but yes, again, thank you for this video. This was a cool video and it prompted us to talk about cool stuff about the matchmaking.